the meteor crater is such a huge like you know blot on the land that we're way back off and we just flew the drone up high enough to see into the crater and we took some pictures of it and some video and stuff so you guys can see where we're at but I mean it's it's a it's a bucket list thing for me but you know you can't fly from or really over like national landmarks and stuff like that so we didn't we just we're far away and and we took some we got some pictures of this so. even since I was a little kid I've always wanted to come here and, and do something like this but you know now with the advent of drone technology and everything like that like wow the opportunity to take a picture of a crater that isn't on the moon is uh, you know available to the normal person but don't be stupid and go fly your drone over the crater all right that's how you get in a lot of trouble. We took a lot of precautions, and I looked at a lot of different uh, 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 the laws and rules regarding this. So. I like how the deck has become the landing pad. Don't be jealous of our deck. It's not cool. <laughs> kind of cool. Huh? I ran the battery down to nothing. It was like threatening to land me, but I was already landing. So. It's so early in the morning, it's still cold out here. But look at how beautiful there. What is this? The museum? Visitor yeah. center? Whatever it's called. The building is beautiful. Oh, uh, a round door to match the round building. Great architecture, right? Hello, oh, I forgot morning. my mask. Do we have to have masks? It's up to you. Oh, okay. Thank God. <laughs> What's your name? My name is Paul. Hi, Thank, you guys. Thanks, Welcome Paul. Welcome to the Meteor Crater. And this, these guys are coming in and having some fun. And Going to enjoy themselves today. Absolutely. <laughs> That's right. Thank you very much. A little history on the crater. Somewhere around here, there's a crater. Let's see if we can find it. We just have to get our exercise in to see the crater. Yeah, they make you work for it, don't they? Get my little morning workout, stair stepper. Getting the burn. Oh, another astronaut. I'm not an astronaut. <laughs> I just that guy behind you is. So you guys have no idea, like this is like such a bucket list item for me. I'm like such a nerdy uh, space geek. Touching something that the Apollo astronauts actually trained in, like that's cool. <laughs> it's time for the museum. That's right. Dun, dun, dun. Put his hand on screen. It literally worked. Didn't expect that. Access denied. <laughs> Dial be your flight commander today aboard the SDS Mariner. I'm Buzz Perseus, and I'm pleased to have you aboard soon. Today, we have a full slate of activities planned to really give you a sense of what we do here at Meteor Crater and how our work helps protect the planet from near-Earth objects. All right. Put on your seatbelt. This ship is equipped with state-of-the-art space drones and both tools for collecting samples. Space objects are constantly in motion and frequently falling. Oh, my.
a close call. Welcome back to Earth, and thank you for your help today. <laughs> that was fun. This is the largest piece they found of this crater, or the meteor. The Halsinger meteorite, the largest discovered fragment of the 150 foot meteor that created Meteor Crater. Oh, we have a perimeter trail. Looks like. I know, that's what I was just saying. Like, there's a trail like along the edge? <laughs> that is cool. It took just 10 seconds, and Meteor Crater was formed. We were so lucky, we just barely missed the visitor center. <laughs> Use the buttons below and follow the directions on the computer screen to create your own crater. Uh, got select plus object. Plus or minus over here. 35. Oh, velocity. Oh, okay, I see. Let's turn it down. Gonna turn it down a bit? Yeah, it's going to be a slow one. Okay. Coming in 11 kilometers a second. Diameter? 50 meters. Planet? Well, Earth, of course. Run. Exploded in the atmosphere. It didn't come in at 90, obviously. Exploded in the atmosphere. All right, we gotta try this again. This one, 40 degrees is gonna bounce off. We're gonna have to speed it up. Five kilometers. Here we go. Life ender. Oh yeah, baby. Just wiped out dinosaurs and stuff. They're gonna name that crater after me. Years after impact. Yep, King Crater. King Crater. I love how immersive the museum is here. What is this? Apparently, this is about near Earth objects. Oh, very pretty. It looks like the Milky Way. Navigander. Cool, right? Oh, look. I get to hear this phone call. It's a very important phone call. Wait a minute. Oh, we have choices. Alex, I'll take asteroid fact versus fiction for a hundred. Mm-hmm. I can hear. Very informative. That's cool. Look at this. I don't want to touch the lower screen to begin. I just want to look at this. Look what I, did right I like the orbit. No. Fall. <gasps> oh, jeepers. Wow. Oh, and it's green right now. That's rare, isn't it? It's never green down in the center of the crater. Every picture you've ever seen of this crater is brown, brown, brown. You know what? This is way bigger than I thought it was. Really? Does this seem bigger? Like you're seeing it for the first time. You can't even like get the scale on this. It's way deeper. Yeah. Yeah, it's very deep with those edges up I mean, on it. When you look at the scale, that dude standing over there at the end of that little platform, you're like, oh wow, okay, this thing is gigantic. All right, we're finally going outside. What's Hi! Up? I saw your guys' bus out there. What's your bus? We don't have a name yet, but we're, we're going from California to Florida, so. Oh, awesome. Wow! Yeah. I saw him like, there's another schoolie here. Yeah, we were all excited. <laughs> How you doing? Schoolie people! Oh, I'm Daniel. Daniel? Juni. Yes, I'm Carrie. Carrie. Juni. Right, nice to meet you. Daniel, right? Yes. Okay. Carrie and Mike. Yeah, there are a lot of schoolies in uh, Flagstaff when we come out of there. Oh yeah? Yeah, I went to the Cracker Barrel and you know, it was full. <laughs> That's funny. This is cool. Ready for the view? Wow. Oh my gosh, look at that. I know, all out of breath <laughs> for climbing those stairs. Okay, it was a climb, all right? <laughs> it is deeper than I imagined it to be or from looking at pictures. 
Maybe even on camera. I've watched other videos and it didn't seem this deep either. I'm so amazed by how green it is. There's that equipment down in the bottom. Is that from when Beringer was trying to dig out the yeah. meteor? He thought he was going to find the meteor buried down there, but he dug for 27 years and all they ever found was fragments. There's our new friend Schooly down in the parking lot. I wish our buses were parked next to each other. Right. Now we're on our way to the lower observation deck, which extends out into space over the crater. This is cool. Okay, what are all these? House size rock. Okay, let's have a look. It's that rock right there. That rock is the size of a, a full size house. We won't know until we get there. Can you imagine how many houses could sit around the rim of this crater, even with space in between them? So many houses could fit around this. This thing is huge. It's way more massive than I was thinking based on the pictures. Yeah. Six foot tall astronaut, three by five flag. Where? I don't even see them. Oh, they're so tiny. Oh, the camera won't zoom far enough to find the astronaut. There's a little astronaut with his flag standing right around there in that general area. Oh, look, there's another little secret shaded viewing area down there. I think we need to find out how to go there next. I love the network of paths and stairways around here. It's really cool. They did a good job building the visitor facilities around here. So this is pretty much as close as you can get to feeling like you're down in the crater. We're still up on the edge in all actuality, but this is the lowest point you can get to to hang out and be somewhat down in the crater. Nice little seating area for Mike to rest his weary soul. Mm -hmm. My soul is all used up. The soles of your shoes. <laughs> it's very quiet down here. I feel like I have to whisper like I'm in a library or something. Mm -hmm. Only it's Mother Nature's library. You can see the astronaut down there now. This thing is so huge. People look minuscule down there, like a real live person could be down there. And if they were standing still and not moving, yeah, you, you would, would never see them. You wouldn't find, it's huge. It's so, yeah. so big. The size of this right here, that whole area down there would easily encompass the downtown area with the big buildings of all of San Francisco. And the tops of them wouldn't make the tops of the rim here. That's how big is what you're so looking at. So it would encompass what, like downtown San Francisco? Is that what you're All talking about? All the big about? buildings of downtown San Francisco uh -huh. would fit in here In this easily. area and be down and within. And be below the rim. Wow. Including like the Transamerica. And those. San Francisco could fit down there? The downtown, yeah. You can't like project scale. You're, you guys are seeing this in 2D, but this is fantastically huge. Yeah. Oh, you know what would be great is if they built a football field down in the bottom of the crater. That yeah. would really give you scope. You're right, that would actually help a lot. Yeah, because this is not like a coliseum where like, you know, the seating is just right around the game field. Could you imagine how many people could watch that football game along the side edges? <laughs> the super <laughs> coliseum. I mean, that rock right there is the size of a house, so, right. you know. <laughs> That's a neat, you know, crater front property. That's where it's at. I love how they have hands-on toys for you to play with. 
However, you have to be short to see in this one. Thanks, Mahones. Got it. Guess what's coming next? When you get to the end of the concrete, you will see a rounded paved area. Please wait there for me. Come on out, folks. Breaking the first rule. <laughs> We're so excited about this part. I can hardly wait. We're going out there. I can't believe it. This crater was first recorded to be found in 1870 by a man named Franklin Bennett. Franklin Bennett was a scout in the US Army under a very esteemed general by the name of General Custer. You might have heard of him. His mission was simple. He was to scout this territory and find places to build what we now know as the Santa Fe Railroad. However, back in the late 1800s it was called the atlantic to pacific railroad instead of finding a place to build it he in fact found this crater however when he reported it back they didn't believe him they thought he was delusional and he had to be hallucinating spending way too much time under the hot desert sun because <laughs> in everybody else's minds there was no way there's a giant hole in the middle of the desert <laughs> nobody was ever sent to investigate if this place actually existed instead they just gave it its first name they called this crater Franklin's Hole, out of sheer mockery. Now, it wasn't until 20 years later, our founder, Daniel Berenger, while living in Philadelphia, started hearing rumors coming from this territory that people were finding pieces of rock filled with iron and nickel in them. He, in fact, believed they found one of two things. Either they found an iron deposit, or they found a meteorite impact zone. The year was 1901, when he first stepped foot here at the crater. All he in fact had to do was look out upon it. In his mind, he instantly knew it was a meteorite impact zone. The problem was though, in the early 1900s, Daniel Banger and the USGS were under the impression that whatever created this gigantic crater had in fact be the exact same size, still intact and buried under the ground. <laughs> that of course did not happen. When that meteorite came from the Southwest at an 80 degree angle, almost straight down, on impact, 80% of that meteorite was disintegrated and flown for 30 miles in every direction. Some pieces are so <coughs> small they will look like black sand or little black rocks. They are known as spheroids. They completely cover the surrounding area. They are under our very feet right now. Which, because of how much iron they contain, during our monsoon season turns us into a huge lightning rod. Oh. By the way, for those of you, welcome to our monsoon season. <laughs> Don't worry, we don't expect this one for another few hours. You would have to be a bloodline relative. Oh, this is so cool. I can't believe we're doing this. Did you ever think you'd be hiking on the rim of the crater? I did not, actually. I really thought that, like, you just went, you know, got to look out over the edge and then, you know, that was it. Yeah, from the observation decks. Yeah, so this is a little bit more. Yeah, this is a pleasant surprise. And you didn't even have to pay more for this. It's just part of your admission. Yeah, like that's a, you know, 20 bucks to come in here. Nothing compared yeah. to what, like the history and yeah. the museum, little movies. Definitely worth it. It's Some been kind of well worth experience. it. This is what it looks like on the way back. It was a very short hike on the path, but lots of really great information from the tour guide. Don't worry, I got Kevin. And here we are back at the Space Center. And I am out of breath. You look at the, the area of destruction around here, look at the height of this crater. That's about the height of the Transamerica building in San Francisco. In fact, the downtown region of San Francisco, the central district would fit neatly inside this crater. So you could see that an area that size would be completely blown away. Not only can this happen again, it will happen again unless we choose to do something. So now we're going to be movie critics. Whoa, front row seats. Despite being more than 50,000 years old, Okay, so if you're rating that movie on like quality, importance, and 
entertainment. I give it a thumbs up. Oh, yeah, totally. Like, the quality really was the definitely there. Yeah, it wasn't like a, a cheesy, corny little film. It was like a high quality nine yeah. minute movie with like great information and great animation. Exactly. Yeah, super cool. I would say if you're coming here, definitely take the nine minutes to watch the film. It's, it's a cool part of the whole experience here. Works. Oh, it's working. <laughs> it's crunching. He didn't. That little pain didn't stand a chance. Boom. Neil Armstrong right on on uh, old uh, Abe's face. Nice. And the gift shop is actually a pretty good sized gift shop. Pretty standard. With a lot of crystals. It is kind of unique that they have a lot of geological sort of gift items here that you wouldn't necessarily find at other gift shops. Yeah, it looks like ice cubes, doesn't it? Pretty. We're having pet owner guilt because we know it's hot in the bus right now. <laughs> so. I think our time at Meteor Crater is complete. Thank you. Thank you very much. You have a good one too. So that was all in all a totally great working. experience. I mean, totally this place working. should be a national park for sure. Right, totally should. I mean, it's some kind of a monument or landmark, right? Yeah. But not like oh, a... Oh, that reminds me, the stamp. Oh my gosh. Just in the nick of time. Oh my gosh, let's do the elevator this time. I've already done 10,000 steps today. Oh, really? Stamp in the book. That's right. Right. Do we have to go on to a new page now? I think we do. I think we filled up our first whole page. Here we go. Let me see. Unless we do it up here, what do you think? Think you can fit it up here? I should be able to. Do it. Excellent. Oh, that is a cool stamp. <laughs> Meteor Crater. I like that one. <laughs> Thank you. Right, Thank cool. you guys. Oh, that's that's a wonderful cool. day. You too. Thank right. you. Okay, now we got it. <laughs> now we have completed everything we could possibly do at Meteor Crater. And I would totally recommend it to anyone to come here and just give yourself enough time to do everything yeah, do like all the wander around and go to the movie theater and watch the movie and go to the little museum and do all the little hands-on immersive things in the museum walk on all the little staircases to all the different observation decks like it was a great experience all the way around mama kitty how was your experience? Where are you, Mama Sita? When I came back and she went underneath me, she was sitting up on the table. Oh, she was? Yeah. And she was like, oh, Dad's back. We're going to drive. Now yeah. I'm going to hide. I'm pretty sure is what she was thinking. Oh. Of course, a staff thing. Our token. Whoops. Token of meteor appreciation. And the NASA shirt. That's right. Oh, he is down to the size large. No more X in his tag. Except for this part right here. Gotta get rid of it. Got a little bit extra on the love handles. That's right. Well, I got a lot of love. So you can handle that. I got a lot of love. That's why <laughs> I got these gloves. Let's do this, ready? Now, there's all of our little tchotchkes that we got from this site. So eight dollars, nine dollars, and a dollar for two pennies. So we spent ten bucks plus our entrance fee and Mike's t-shirt. So this somewhat economy version of shopping. We this was a bucket lift place for me though. The thing about Mike need is, needs new shirts, but instead of like going to Walmart and just buying a bunch of dumb shirts that he doesn't like, we kind of decided that we would let him buy shirts that he likes 
when he sees them because all of his old shirts are either completely stained, stretched out, and destroyed, or they're a size too large now that he's dropping weight like crazy. How much have you lost? 30? 30 pounds. 30 pounds, you guys. Let's give him a round of applause. Woo! That's right. Where are we going next? I was standing on a corner in Winslow, Arizona. Such a fine sight to see. There's a girl, my lord, in a flatbed Ford, slowing down to take a look at me. <laughs> yeah, Winslow, what he said. I wanted to really be sure and film how desolate it is out here. I mean, there is nothing but flat, high desert land, as far as the eye can see. This is like your Main Street USA town right here. Look at this big old Route 66 right in the road. So cool. Love America. from the main street through town where it had that um, Route 66 shield on the driveway. Now, we can go over and get iconic pictures standing on the corner in Winslow, Arizona. So while we're walking, let me just tell you this one thing I forgot to say. There are over 200 meteor impact sites all over the world but the one here in arizona is the best and most perfectly preserved of all the meteor impact sites like this is the big one and we got to see it today it was so cool yeah so in case you're wondering you're not gonna see anything like it anywhere else like arizona is the spot. All right, I gotta get some crazy. Oh, by the way, welcome to Winslow. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and look how unique this is. Shiny silver Airstream, shiny silver pickup. Pretty cute. Oh, it's even like sparkly shiny. Can you see all the sparkles in it? Very pretty. Yeah. This is really pretty. So the famous corner from the song is on 2nd Street and Kinsley Avenue. You draw the queen of diamonds, boy. Frank, get on it. You gotta push it in first. Oh. Desperado. My favorite part. They're driving you home. Good one. Yeah. We don't have much time left in Winslow, so Hopefully. unfortunately we can't do like a full town tour. We're just spending a short period of time on this main strip in town, but we need to grab a little snack to eat before we blaze a trail out of here back to where our car is broken down and hopefully being worked on. And Mike has already found his place at the bar. <laughs> Miracle. We should put a big old burger. Chicken strips and fries, easy to share. Close to a five drive through, I think. Hey man, it was a yeah. pleasure to meet you, hey, man. Pleasure to meet you guys too. Good yeah. luck. Thank you. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. Oh, sorry, did I just kill you? <laughs> no, I stepped on my own foot and that was it. I was going down. Tripping over himself. Mm -hmm. hey, bye bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Well, that was fun. I now feel like we have done as much as we can do in downtown Winslow. Mike went shopping again. 
He's a bad boy. Yes, but this Show is... Show him what we got. So... It's for the bus. There was different places left on the bus for metal signs. Yeah, we had some empty and spots And we've like we officially driven a bunch of 66 on this trip. Right. And so this officially can go on the bus now. Hey, maybe that's something we should consider. I think that you brought this up before that maybe we should do the whole Route 66 from beginning I to end. I totally want to. If you guys think we should do a Route 66 tour, put it in the comments below and give this video a thumbs up. That's and right. we'll know that's your vote for Route 66. Route 66 Americana Tour and on we the will, National School of Graphic Channel. And we will get our kicks on that's Route right. 66. That's right. What are you doing? Trying to push the subscribe button. Dave, it's way easier than that to subscribe. If it was easy to push the subscribe button, everybody would do it. <laughs> That's about it, guys. We'll see you guys next Thursday. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button, obviously. And... Head over to Patreon and see what awesome goodies are available there on our different levels. That's right. But if you don't feel like you can get into that kind of thing right now, obviously you can subscribe. For free. Or, or go over Etsy, get a sticker, get a t-shirt. I even put up some of my uh, lightning prints, as some people have requested. So go over there, check it out. There's some cool merch up there for you guys. But we'll see you guys next week. Thanks for watching us. Love you guys. Bye, bye guys. Bye.